Let's talk about Tino Ndlovu and his links to KZ Chiefs. Let's also talk about Ranga Chiva Viro and the plans that Nazrat Tinabi has for him. Also going to talk about Kosing Pile Ngobo and other things. Hello and welcome to Kosing Nation Fan TV. I am Pilo, I am your host and this, this is where fans meet and talk about KZ Chiefs. Ama Kusi! Football club. Okay, so Tino Ndlovu has been linked with Kaiser Chiefs because he's a free agent, but just because someone is linked to Kaiser Chiefs does not necessarily mean Kaiser Chiefs wanted him. In fact, Kaiser Chiefs are not even looking to sign with Tino Ndlovu because number one, he is 34. Number two, how much money would he be getting if he came to Kaiser Chiefs? Because in Europe, because in China, because in South Korea, or wherever he has played, he's been getting a lot of money. And Kaiser Chiefs are not about to spend crazy amount of money on a person who is 34 years old and is not going to provide value. I'm specifically saying that last part because we do have an older player in Gaston Sereno who we signed, but is providing value at Kaiser Chiefs. So even if we were to sign on Lovu, then what value would he be providing because of this? Nazareth Nabi has his striker, which is Uranga Chiva Viro, is the second thing that I want us to talk about. Because you remember that when Chiefs wanted to sign Uranga Chiva Viro, I think two years back, that very same time, that very same season, Fiston Maele was wanted in Egypt, and Fiston Maele at that season was playing for Nazareth Nabi. And to replace Ufiston Maele, who was going to be signed, Ranga Chivaviro. So this thing of Ranga Chivaviro and some of you guys still doubting what he can do even after he scored two goals and has gotten some other opportunities. Because he, he is another thing that I just want to say about Ranga. He missed some chances. Yes, I get that. But the person who's your favorite, some of you, is Ashley Dupree. He also got a 1v1 chance, which was better than Ranga's because it was on his right foot, but he missed the chance. But you're not hearing any noise about him. But since people have chosen to pick their favorites and say, we want Dupree, even if Ranga gets himself in good positions, even if Ranga holds a play, some people are just going to hate on him just because he's Ranga and they would rather have someone else. So Nabi has his striker that he wanted when he was still at Yanga. And here's him now at Kaiser Chiefs. And he's been doing the thing so far. He's a completely different player from what we saw last season. We see a running runner. And for a player of his size to make up the, the ground that he makes up when he's playing for Chiefs. And that he's been making up over the past three games. It clearly shows that Nabi wants to use Uranga. And he's using him in the way that Ranga would want to be used. And he's playing and he's scoring goals. So two goals in three games. I'm okay with that. And on top of that, yes, KZ Chiefs are still looking for another striker, but looking for a striker as if we're saying, ah, we don't have a striker. I think that people are not watching the game the way they should be. They're just watching with the eyes of favoritism. Can we stop that? Now, let's talk about the third person who is obviously being brought up by a lot of fans. And I mean a lot. The question is, why is Nkosing Pile Ngobo not playing? And I would start by saying, first of all, go and watch the videos where I've been analyzing those games, first and foremost. Secondly, if you're a subscriber and you have not liked the video, what are you doing? Please like the video. And if you are new, please do make sure to subscribe. Let, let's, let's, let's just say, can we get to 50,000? We want to grow. The, the, the growth rate is too slow. Can we get more people to subscribe? Guys, can we subscribe? Please, please subscribe. Okay, fine. Now, number three with this whole thing of machine, actual number two, is the fact that if you see how Mtu Shabalala is used, because he's at 10, right, Mtu Shabalala, he plays behind Uranga. But for some, at, at some point, you see him being alongside Uranga when we are pressing in a 4-4-2 shape. So when we are pressing, Mtu Shabalala is expected to run a lot, right? When we have the ball, let's say they bypass our first line of pressure, which is Ranga and Mshini pressing, and the ball goes through. Who's expected to track back? Mdu also tracks back. Now, having said all of these things that I've said, do you see Mshini being a starter and doing exactly what Mdu Shabalala does for his chips? I'm just asking. This is not to say Mshini does not have qualities that would be good for his chips and all of that stuff, but I'm saying the way that the coach once he's turned to play, energy, pressing, tracking back, is that really Mshini's game plan? 
um, I mean, player profile? Is that what it does? Not really. But that does not mean it does not have qualities that come in handy. For example, Chiefs are going to play against Super Sport United. Super Sport United won't be Mamelo de Sundowns. They won't be trying to be on the ball and dominate the ball and do all of those things. Which means then Mushini comes in games like that because then you are playing against a team that is sitting back and you need someone who can get the ball, try to find a pass or even shoot outside of the box. That is Gosen Pile Ngobo. But the whole thing of running up and down, tracking back, being like a second striker at times, that's not his game. And that's the initial plan of Nazareddin Nabi. High octane, high energy, running and playing in transitions if need be. So I, I hope that people don't end up thinking Nabi hates Shab I mean Mshini because he doesn't. Now, the next thing that I want us to talk about is the fact that uh, Ubaba, the father, the father of Sam Gelozwan, has given his son a warning. Uh, he told him that he must keep his circle very small because, well, uh, people, people are, are, can 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 be what's the word? Can be bad influence. And I wonder if 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 he he's also talked to him about his style of play because I think we, we said this thing beginning of the season. In the Toyota Cup, we saw Sam Gelozwane played in that game. And then we saw him once again in the game, first game of the season. The boy was playing, but then he got dropped and he's never started. He came Yamazulu, he didn't start. Game of 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 the team that we just played, Imamelo de Sundowns, he didn't play. So I wonder if the people who are around him, because his father has brought up the people around him, are telling him about his work rate. Because I think that... On a good day, like if you take Sam Gelozwane and you give him and, and you work on his work rate going backwards, he starts alongside Jabulo Plum in the team, right? He starts, no questions asked. But the question, the thing is, he just does not do that. And because of that, he's now on the back foot. And now Castillo and Matt are ahead of him. And I hope that the people who are around him, even not just the people who are around him, even us as fans, we, 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 I, I just hope we can become more constructive in our criticism, right? Not to just say, ah, Lomfana, uh, yeah, yeah, fancy, yeah, but to say, you know what, Samgel, it would be good if you worked on your defensive ability because you are a midfielder after all, and you need to chip in those tackles. You need to chip in those intersections from time to time. Interceptions, rather. So I, I just hope that the online people who are around him as well are not praising him all the time and removing the things that is he, he's supposed to be doing. Why am I bringing this up? Because I know that 95% of people who are, who are here are saying, oh, Samgelo is better than Mart. Yes, he might be better than Mart going forward. But with defense, Mart is still better. And because of that, with all his flaws, with all the losing of positions, with all the misplaced passes that Mart makes, but the thing is, coaches can still rely on him defensively. And that's how Sam Gelo gets benched. Did you hear my logic? I know someone on the comments will be saying, Mpilo, you always protect Matt. I'm not protecting Matt. And I will tell you who oh, my starting 11 actually, I think on a video that I will release at some point. And it does not have Matt just to show that if a player is performing, I will say they should play. If they don't perform, then I shouldn't pick them. But what do you guys think? Do you think that the Chiefs can find other ways of... I mean, doing things better in terms of, uh, 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 <laughs> I don't want to say doing things better. In fact, I wanted to ask Guguti, do you think that Ichivs can just wait a bit with signing a striker because they still look Duba available, they still look Dupri available? Or do you think that it's a situation when they should be signing a striker, a striker in January? And also, what do you think about the whole situation of Nkosing Pile Ngobo and what do you think it can fit at Kays Chiefs right now? Do let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, remember, equals. I'll pay you more.